Last week on the Poison Rana Patreon, we talked all about Wallace and Gromit, a grand day out, and the wrong trousers, as well as Leprechaun 4, In Space, and NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Hey there, Braden, Davey, and all the great Up Next fans. It's me, Johnny Gargano, and I heard through the grapevine that you guys were hosting a special watch-along of my match from TakeOver Philadelphia against Andrade. For the NXT Championship. And that match holds a very special place in my heart because I truly believe that was the night that Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Takeover, was born. The main event from this show. Um, but it became a bit of a running gag as well, where like I'd be talking to people about wrestling and they'd be like, ah, I don't I don't really get it. And I'd show them this match and and occasionally it, it became uh, not Netflix and chill, but mm. um, Gargano v. Almas and chill. and chill. And, well, it seemed to prove effective because in my early days of Up Next, I'd get messages from people being like, hey, it worked. I just showed some of this match <laughs> and, well, we're getting married or something. So. Get this show plus NXT retro reviews, wrestling reviews, movie reviews, and so much more over at patreon.com slash poison rana and it's only five bucks so what are you waiting for what are you waiting for huh what are you waiting for first time in a long time but back like i never left taking these days as it comes you know me i don't read ahead Watch me burn down everything, BDE on the TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. With Davey Portman for Up Next. You found us on postwrestling.com or whatever podcast app you are listening to us on right now. And of course, we are live on youtube.com slash post wrestling. Hello, YouTube room. How are we doing? Hello, post marks, NXT friends. Friends. We are your NXT friends and we're going to chat about NXT. It's Tuesday night. So we will chat all about the road to stand and deliver in Philadelphia in just just a few weeks now. It's getting very close. Getting yes. into it. So we're going to chat about everything that happened on tonight's episode of NXT and then some. So yeah, big episode. Lots of tag team matches. Trick Williams, Carmelo Hayes ending the show. Mm -hmm. The Good Brothers. The good Brothers. Yeah, the luckiest guys in wrestling. Exactly. We're on our Tuesday night telly. That's right. You know, in a, never in a million years would I think I'd be watching the Good Brothers of all people in NXT on Tuesday night. I feel like I've been I've been watching them too long in too many promotions, but God bless them. Yeah, bless them for real. So uh, it's Tuesday. We are going to chat about NXT, and we're uh, we're here live on the YouTube as well. So we will be going live next week, and then the week after that. Is that how many weeks there are left? Um, wait, yes, I believe so. We're, we're still going live. We'll be going live uh, this week. The next week, we might have to do a bit of a road diary or something. Because That's right. Uh, it will be after collision. That's right. Oh, That's yeah. right. Yeah, we got a lot of things, uh, some ground to cover here, especially those for Toronto fans. Any listeners in the GTA Toronto area that are going to AEW Dynamite tomorrow night, I mean, come on. Are you really a Torontonian wrestling fan if you're not going to see Edge versus Christian in Toronto, possibly for the last time? You got to go. And after that, you also got to go to Sneaky D's for the BDE and the Poison Rana Wrestling Karaoke AEW Dynamite unofficial after party 
Tomorrow night, we're going to be rocking with some tunes over at Sneaks upstairs in Toronto. It's literally just the streetcar up or an Uber or hell walk if you're crazy because there was snow today. Hopefully not tomorrow. Uh, but show up and show out and we're going to we're going to have some fun tomorrow night here in the six. So love to see some of you find people out there. Yeah. Last time we did this was a. Uh, a big success. We didn't really know what to expect. And a whole load of people came over from Coca-Cola for some wrestling karaoke. Uh, and yeah, we'd absolutely love to see some of you there. Uh, if you're in the area, why not pop, pop over? Uh, we've got our drink list just dropped. Oh. We've got some new ones like the, the Monet maker. The Monet maker. Uh, the Os cutter. As selected by Osprey himself. Exactly. He wanted something with vodka and something sweet and fruity. Yes. And well, that's what you got. That's right. Uh, and then the concerto. Yeah, what was in that? Am amaretto, I saw. Amaretto, it's, concerto. Well, I, I was trying to do like, okay, concerto, it's two things. Yeah. Think, okay, Canadian. So I thought, okay, let's do Canadian whiskey. That's an easy place to start. Um, but need to shake it up a bit. And uh, there's a, a drop shot called the Lunchbox. Okay. Um, which is, uh, I believe, amaretto dropped in orange juice and beer. So oh, I just done yeah. a little yeah, okay. change with that. So it's amaretto whiskey dropped in beer. Nice. And that will give you a, a nice headache. Like yeah, the give concerto. you the concerto. Exactly. Yeah, after yeah. a few too many, you'll exactly. feel like one 100%. the next morning. So good stuff. And bring back our old favorite mocktail. Uh, he may be gone from the company, but he's not gone from our menu. The Pepsi Plunge. That's right. Yeah. Popular. Sounds awful. It's very popular and it's Pepsi very yummy. Plunge. Yes, at Poison Rana Pod, Twitter, Instagram, to go see. I put it on our Twitter th thus far, but I'll put it up tomorrow. The menu, you have cocktails and all that fun stuff. Uh, very, very nice. So those will be on sale at our AW After Party here at Sneaky D's in Toronto. Uh, can't wait to see you people. If you do show up, say hello. We're very friendly. It's only five bucks to, to come over and some join. Surprises them. to be won. Yeah. To show up. You got some pretty sweet. Uh, swag going on some shirts that are no longer available yeah we got AW. some AEW merch some good stuff and yep. maybe some lucha masks as well so you know we always keep the we, we live the gimmick and anyone who knows us we like to party and have a good time so mm. it'll be just that especially uh, if you're a wrestling fan because we want some singers and uh yeah it's gonna be a fun time and on top of that while we're promoting some toronto stuff if you're sticking around or you're in the toronto area thursday you gotta go check out demand lucha because i mean if if you're if you're not seen enough wrestling on the Wednesday, you might as well stay out and go out on the Thursday because that's what we're doing. And we'll be going and checking out all the fun stuff. I know they got Gringo on the card. Jack Cartwheel's been on a tear. I think he's taken on Joey Janela. And there's going to be some some street fights and some lucha. And Doesn't Gringo got a surprise partner? That's right. It's Gringo and a partner versus uh, the Medicos, our favorites yeah. here. So, And I mean, possibly with AEW in town, who knows who might show up at these things. So uh, I, I just demand Lucha is just always legit. The most fun. We bring so many of our friends and we they every time they're like, oh, my God, I want to go again. And, and so many we run into so many listeners now as well. So shout out all you fine people. You know who you are. It's, it's always a great time. Yeah. It's a it's a great venue for indie wrestling. I think uh, parked it like we we love it. Uh, so yeah, uh, absolutely. If you're in the area, go check them out. Too. And Toronto people, if you're not sure what you're doing for WrestleMania, because maybe you're not making the trip with us in in a few weeks to Philly, we are still throwing a WrestleMania watch party at Gabby's in Toronto. No, we won't be there, but we'll still have the WrestleMania both nights on the big screen on all the screens. And we'll have prizes and stuff to give away as well. Yes. So even though we won't be there, we'll be in Philly supporting and yeah. cheering on. We have got uh, USPS providing uh, some pretty sweet prizes on the exactly. way. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, so there you go, Toronto peeps. We uh, we we love to see you and let us know if you're showing us again. Follow us on all the socials and, and hit us up. Yeah, poisonrana.ca. You can find the links to all our events. You can find the links to our Patreon, uh, which we have a whole lot of stuff coming out, uh, as well as the link to chopped-tees.com slash poisonrana, where you can pick up some sweet, sweet merch. Uh, we just finished the uh, the competition to win 350 US oh, dollars. Yeah. Uh, so uh, congratulations to Tony Beardsley for winning that promotion. Nice. Uh, getting a whole load of swag from Chop Dash Tees. But you can pick up some of our own swag as well, including this brand new Rocky inspired Poison Rana. There we go. We'll go that way. Baseball tee. Uh, the baseball tee is very soft. Nice. By the way. It's very, very nice. Comfortable. 
Yeah, uh, you made a, a Rocky-inspired Poison Rana T-shirt, and you can get them in like baseball tees. All our logos you can get in different variations. Bring a tee. Yeah, you can get everything, and and the new hats. You know, I'm a, a hat guy, and having my own frog on the hat. Dicky has perfected the hat for me, and I gotta say, check out the the perfect snapbacks that we got. You can get yourself a Poison Rana one. You can get your post wrestling ones. It's so awesome. So shout out Dickie because this website looks awesome. You're making us yeah. look like superstars. And and shout out anyone who has bought anything and really supported us. And it, it helps. And uh, go check out all the all the new merch. We'll always be uploading new stuff and everything. But the new stuff that you've put up so far is is pretty awesome. So go support your boys. That's how you can do it. And you mentioned a Patreon. I know we're plugging, but we might as well keep away on this train. We have been uh, going overtime this month. This is the biggest month. So you know what? You've ever wanted to support the Poison Rana lads. Now's the time you can buy us a beer in Philly spiritually by buying yourself some podcasts because it's only five bucks to get a whole month's access. And I mean, this week alone on the Patreon is already worth $5. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think I did say this on another show, but we're recording this month as if it's the pandemic again when we've got nothing better to do. We are putting out... Even though we're busy. We're going <laughs> overtime uh, for Patreon this month because... We're excited. We're excited for the mania. We're excited to go to Philadelphia. And therefore, we've just packed this month with things to get us in the mood for Philly. Uh, so yes. we've we've just released, you heard it at the beginning of the show, our review of NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, a show uh, just before uh, Up, Up Next, Next was started. birthed. That's so right. we're, we're like, what, seven months pregnant at yeah. this point, about to... Uh, start this thing and yeah so a show we never actually reviewed even though we've talked about the main event a lot yes gargano v almas and chill you want to hear about the origin story of this infamous slogan catchphrase lifestyle you can hear all about it and even some cameos from possibly well you heard it already yeah. but johnny gargano <laughs> shows up because he was gracious enough to send this video in all these years ago uh for our one of our live events even back then mm. so uh, shout out anyone who's been uh, listening from the beginning and any new listeners. And this is a perfect time because uh, TakeOver Philly was such an awesome show. Yes, Gargano v. Almas, like one of the best NXT matches, if not the best ever. And plus Cole versus Black, Velveteen Dream versus Ono, The Undisputed Era versus AOP, uh, Baszler, Moon, and, and a lot of people in the crowd yes. as well. So it was really fun to look back at that show and revisit and look at Philly because we're going to be going there. But uh, we also are going to be looking at some Philly shows this week because we are planning on going to the ECW tribute show to the extreme on the Friday at the ECW arena. Mm -hmm. So we put it to a tad poll on the Facebook group and we all voted on ECW big ass extreme bash. I hope I got that name right. <laughs> and from 1996, which features the the very famous Rey Mysterio versus uh, Juventud Guerrero two out of three falls match. And then the funny thing is, I didn't realize this, but watching it today, Taz versus Chris Jericho, which tomorrow will be at this time tonight, have just watched Taz versus son. son. Yeah, oh. Taz's son versus Chris Jericho, which is even crazier. So uh, so we're looking back at this. Uh, all, I, all I'm hoping is tomorrow we don't get Blue Meanie and Stevie Richards running out. Right, yeah. All over the show. Yeah. Uh, we, I, I'm, I've not finished this yet, but Big Ass Extreme Bash, it's on the network somewhere, and they haven't... So <laughs> I, sorry, I thought you meant your plug. Oh. You're like, excuse me, I've not finished No, no, set. I've not finished my <laughs> plug. No, no, like... Uh, I've not finished the show, yeah. Yeah, I've not finished the show yet, like the, the watching it, because I, I have about an hour left of yeah. it to record tomorrow. But uh, yeah, all these old ECW guys, and we're going to be chatting about that. And then uh, it'll it'll get us hyped for going to the ECW arena Absolutely. in a few weeks. But yeah, it has some other classic guys on there as well. Uh, and then if that's not Philly enough for you, I mean, what more Philly is this? We're going to be reviewing Rocky, mm -hmm. the OG 1976. Can you imagine 1976? That's 1976. Crazy. 19 19. I thought it was 84. Wow. 1976. Older? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's an old ass movie. Yeah. I, I've I've. Got to put update Rocky some of these four? graphics. <laughs> yeah. Rocky Four, I think maybe. Uh, yeah, like on the Am screen I wrong? right now. No, you might. Oh, no. You're probably right. Uh, Rocky movie. Let's Google this. Rocky movie. Yeah, 1976. 1976. I don't know why. We've done a lot of films from 1984, so I just think yeah. that's a safe bet. It's like yeah. It's yeah. Oh well. 
pro- Rocky like five is probably from yeah. like that movie, that era. But yes, the original Rocky, we would love for you to get some feedback in. I think we're recording this sometime on Friday afternoon. So mm-hmm. uh, on the Facebook, on the Patreon, there's some links to write in some thoughts and whatever. If you got some links or messages for this movie, we would love to read them on the show. Absolutely. And then to round off the month, we've got coming up uh, our review of WrestleMania 15, uh, the, the WrestleMania that took place in Philadelphia. That's Rock Austin one yeah and i think what big show mankind hell yeah yeah wow uh i'm sure there's some other stuff attitude era yeah um and then a poison profile on paul Heyman. yeah i mean so those are some crazy shows that we got lined up and if you missed it i mean this past weekend was saint patrick's day Mm -hmm. we did our leprechaun reviews as we do every year and we looked at Possibly the worst one thus far. We said this every year. <laughs> it's only going to get better next year when, when it's in the hood. Yeah. But we looked at Leprechaun 4 in space. So if you like horror movies and us shitting all over it, it'll be the podcast for you. We had a fun. Oh, and how to learn how to pour a Guinness. That's what we also learned mm. on that show. Yes, so, that's true. Lots of fun stuff. Um, And then finally, we recorded an Up Yours with Chris Elliott, where on Up Yours, it's a show where if you're our world champion, our family member tier, you get to pick something for us to review, and it can be literally anything. And, well, Chris picked uh, two animated shorts, Wallace and Gromit, A Grand Day Out, and The Wrong Trousers. And uh, this was a lot of fun, this show. A bit of nostalgia, a bit of cheese. And uh, if you've never heard of this, I suggest you watch these because they're only... 25 minutes long they're free online the and wrong they're, trousers they're a lot of fun yeah i'm sure anyone's kids would love mm. love that as well good clean fun and stuff but also fun still still holds up even as an adult watching it was pretty fun to review as well and talking about cheese mm-hmm. so uh lots and lots of podcasts support us five bucks patreon.com slash poison rana i swear that's all for the uh the ads other than this super chat from brandon from new jersey says this episode is sponsored by double nut so I don't know if Double Nut is a certain product or just how well his evening is going tonight. But what does that mean? I don't know. Double Nut sounds I mean, naughty. Yeah, that's where my brain is yeah. going. So yeah, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate you. Hmm. you. See you soon. See you soon in Philly. We will. I can't do. wait. I, I'm gonna have a Wawa. Brandon from you're New gonna Jersey. have a Wawa with Brandon. <laughs> that sounds dirty, <laughs> <laughs> but he knows what it means. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so uh, is Double Nut available at Wawa? I don't know. We'll have to ask him. Send in another super chat, Brandon, <laughs> <laughs> for maybe about seven dollars. <laughs> oh, he's not happy. I, I don't think is he. Love you, Brandon. I'm only but... <laughs> joking. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna be in Philly in a few weeks. We're we're geared up for that. We got a lot of shows going on. Again, if you're headed out to some of these shows, let us know. We're going to have all our, our boys with us. I can't wait to see our friends like Brandon from New Jersey mm-hmm. and all the rest of you. And uh, we're going to be be uh, looking. We don't have our Mania tickets yet. We're playing that game of the waiting game, yeah. which could end up biting us in the ass, but who knows? It's, yeah, I mean, it's the tickets have always looked kind of like what they are at the moment. I think night two's gone up a bit, but um yeah it's it's a scary game to play we're playing it for money in the bank as well because yeah. those prices look nuts are they crazy well. too oh great i mean the the, co- the cheapest tickets and bear in mind like an arena the cheaper tickets are way better than a stadium cheapest tickets course, right like it's a lot smaller yeah um but it was for the combo it was like 300 was like the cheapest like restricted mm-hmm. view and that's for all three i couldn't see maybe they are now but they didn't have when i looked the individual days on sale yet right okay so we'll see but Damn. we'll be in that building one way or the other yeah i mean nxt stand and deliver tickets are still on sale and they're kind of cheapish yep. so we'll we'll buy those <laughs> yeah and then we know we're going to that yeah so far we know we're going to a few of the, the indie stuff as well so it's just going to be a fun weekend i i made the mistake of uh getting all my taxes up to date thinking i'd be owed stuff to like help with this trip i was very wrong <laughs> so patreon.com yes. slash boys <laughs> help us out to help us make sure we go to mania you know why night i'm surprised night two is more money obviously it's like cody finishing the story and and the the night two right but night one has the rock Mm -hmm. and i mean his entrance alone is going to cost like probably a a few millions and (laughs) millions so you were saying we were talking uh, on sunday if you haven't checked out poison rana please search that in your podcast feed and hit that subscribe because on sunday we were chatting about Mercedes Monet coming into AW and we talk all about that and all the hype for that and dynamite tomorrow. But we are also talking about the rock and his, his Hollywood theme, how he yeah. kind of brought it back with a remix. So what do you think if, if every week on SmackDown, 
he the entrance is getting bigger because it, it has been hasn't it to start with it was like the classic rock entrance like baby face rock yeah and then it added the the glowing brahma ball with the, the big red glowing eyes. red eyes and then i think the week after that it added the lightning bolt effect Black during Adam. that and then this week was hollywood rock on top of that right. so yeah Fucking like great. by mania it's what's he's, he's gonna does Black Adam? I haven't seen Black Adam. What's he do? Does he fly? Does he fly? Okay, so like I know we've seen people like take helicopters to get into their match, but like his entrance at Mania, The Rock shows up on his private jet, the TKO jet, steps off the runway, drives off, gets to the arena. I don't know how they can make that. I'd work. be pissed if I was Roman. I'd You're be like, like, hey, we should be strategizing. No, no, no. <laughs> while he's watching, so it'll take about the same time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to get from the airport or wherever they can land. But like you got to think he's the rock he's tko he should be able to have the most like insane yeah. money entrance oh it's going to be ridiculous so i'm project I, I think his jet the billion dollar tko jet let's go okay they, cool. they, have, they have one of those probably a few right yeah vince is gone yeah they got a few extra jets laying around now i think maybe no they're still trying to pay why vince is right. gone so that's maybe why no we're seeing jets. all of them no more jets up in AEW right no now. what no wrestlers on yeah. airplanes in fact yeah actually yeah. no way though um yeah what other big entrances do you think there'll be this year uh like possibly what paramore with uh bailey she's been wanting them to play her out for like years yeah and like the video made it sound like yeah you can use our song yeah <laughs> which was like okay well you could use our song but are they going to just play her out maybe they give her a new theme fair enough yeah, yeah uh, possibly i think down she, she should oh do we see uh the return of the hugger music at mania Right, right, yeah. The big inflatable arm yeah. filling tube men. Do we get that again? <laughs> Wacky waving inflatable arm exactly. filling tube men. Yeah, that's right. I had to say it right. Uh, yeah, possibly. I think Downstate is teasing some sort of new remix of oh, Kingdom. God. I don't think it's like, don't think Snoop Dogg remix. Think like... Why why fuck with perfection? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think like maybe something with like adding a, a vocalist on top and like co playing the band. Not not the vocalist from Downstate. Please. So like, I don't think they necessarily did a good job when they did it in AW. Mm. And that seemed to be a lot of people like, ooh, they didn't sound too good. And you know I love Downstate, so I want to give them benefit of the doubt. And I need to see it in WWE. Maybe they were mic'd wrong. Maybe, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a thing. So if they come out with someone else singing with them, then like, that'd be sick. I just don't know who else would be like on it. I do. Okay. Brandy. <laughs> uh, i don't know if she's got the the chops for that she but. she thinks she does <laughs> right yeah Who, what's that band cody randomly said in like an interview he's obsessed with our lady peace our lady peace yeah, yeah. Get, get the guy from our lady peace to, to get, get jeremy taggart on the drums let's go let's let's get this kingdom remix band all right from cody. so there's a big at wrestlemania yeah. entrance i think we would we'd be seeing but yeah a, a few rhea ripley would probably have something mm -hmm. crazy i think the band played her out last time but that would be uh pretty awesome but yeah i i've been not enjoying wrestling themes lately though. oh no i've been seeing a lot of hate towards some of the new themes in wrestling and i'm like glad that's kind of like been talked about more because the rumble was a big like tip off for me like whoa i don't know anyone's theme songs and then the video because we did it at a bar and like everyone's reaction is like listening and looking oh it's that person and then the video of seth rollins came out where he was doing the same thing and like i don't want to just say or blame it's this Def Rebel or whoever they buy a lot of these themes for to get them to make because they've also created some like really good ones. But why can't we get like back in the day in wrestling, like hire different people, make an album again, put it on streaming services. Yeah. Like there's so much you could be doing and how many artists out there, bands, rappers, singers, DJs who are wrestling fans who would love to do that kind of stuff. It's, it's clearly just money. Yeah. Cause they do, like when they want to, you know, we're not getting a, a shitty deaf rebel version of cult personality. Oh, yeah. We're, we're just the paying real the thing. band. Yeah. Same with edge. They're like, we're paying them. Yeah. We're getting this. And you can see that with, you know, your Kevin Owens, your Sami Zayn's, your people that still have their CFOs music where yeah. whatever it is. Okay. Well, we need this for this guy, but then there's so, so many of the, the ones that are taking the CFOs ones and changing them. Oh, just so bad sound worse like the uh, yeah they're just the, the johnny gargano the johnny one, the gargano one, one uh like nia jack's main evented last night and her new song sounds like the old song but still like i remember the 
I couldn't she's sing any. Still of the not ones. like most girls. Yeah, <laughs> like I remember the old one, but yeah, it's they just yeah. don't really connect. Um, and I think you can tell who the stars are because they're like, no, you're having good music. Just, yeah, just you know? it's weird. Like you, you, you could easily. I'm not saying your NXT people level people maybe need to go out and pay for all these crazy things, but like, can you not like find other? Like I, I do music on the side. You know how many like bands and DJs and all sorts of different good quality music that's out there probably even cheaper to or free yeah. for some people if you just sign it over because it's like how cool is it it's just odd that they like really specifically have stuck with this one like mm. group that it's like hey like so many other things out there so it has been something that's bugging me because it happened today i'll jump ahead because the no quarter catch crew they come out to this like guitar riff they put it up on their youtube channel tell me if i'm crazy it sounds like the power rangers theme song like an identical rip off of it so i'm like what is going on <laughs> It's very similar. It, it sounds like it's, yeah, like the skeleton version yeah. of the Power Rangers thing. So, yeah, just crazy. But anyways. Uh, did you catch any of Raw yesterday? I did. I had to see uh, Cody Rhodes in a black suit. Oh, I knew yeah. things is symbiote Cody. Mm. I had to see what was going to come out of his mouth. And uh, he he said some some things. I liked the bandana on Pharaoh. Yeah. I, I know how he didn't want to say the rock is a, so he put the rock as a cat thought that was pretty clever mm -hmm. without getting away with cer saying certain things but also it's a dog so yeah. dogs hate cats and cat also is another word for something else so i thought that was funny uh and then him bringing up the tko guy i'm blanking on the name but like that's that was pretty funny as well but uh, i don't think he necessarily like scorched the rock as much but i still think it was so good and i i, I love to see more of this going forward and i know they should meet yeah. face to face a few more times why well, i think like I, I thought he, oh, he always sounds great. Yeah. But I think the so big good. one this week is SmackDown because it's him and Roman face to face, and that's something we need to yeah. heat up a bit more now. Yeah. Especially Roman, who's felt a little bit of a background player in all of this. Uh, but yeah, Cody has always uh, sounded great. I loved this week the stuff with Sammy and Chad Gable. Um, it's very rocky. <laughs> it is very rocky. Um. I, think, I mean the movie, not like it's a little shaky. No, I, I but I thought uh, like Gable like played it so well. Like it wasn't wasn't like it was a heel turn, and it's but it's just like yeah, like cool, you won. I'm just I'm pissed off. I'm mad. Yeah. I wanted to win. Yeah, Sammy, I just thought that conversation felt like two real people talking, which you don't get often in wrestling. Is that the camera following him? Yeah, yeah. well, that was pretty cool as well. But um, so I think we're now and now playing that with the. You know, you can't beat him planting that seed of doubt. Are we going to see Gable becoming like like the mentor figure, like the right. coach for Sammy? Right. Because it's like, I know if anyone knows the most about Gunther, it's me and I'm going to try and help you um, win it. But Yeah. Yeah. Like Paulie. Yeah, like exactly. Rocky. I exactly. know we haven't watched it yet, but we're watching it this week. Yeah, that's what that's what they're doing. Right. Okay. But doesn't I haven't seen it yet, but doesn't Rocky lose? He does. In the first one, spoilers. Yeah. In the first one. I've got, like, I don't think Sammy wins at okay. Mania. Wow. Um, I don't think Sammy is, like, IC champion. Like, we've seen him be IC champion. Yeah. Like, it's beating Gunther. Cool. That's great. But it really feels like it is Chad Gable's story here. Which, which is, is crazy. Which is crazy. Sammy Zane. Going back last year. Going when back we're like, any year. He's always the other Where we're going, oh, Sammy should be at Mania. Yeah. I think gable winning the raw after mania would be an awesome moment for that weekend okay you're you know? saying i gotta stay one more night well yeah i I've, I've already booked my flights unfortunately yeah. but um but yeah i think that could be cool if you have like sammy not doing it at mania you're and turning then... on our on our countrymen no i love sammy wow. i'm just i don't know it's i i do you'll break like roman's losing yeah. i would assume it's like do you want to end all these is becky gonna beat rhea as well i don't know do you want all these like long streaks to end necessarily on Mania? Right. And maybe if you save it, like this is uh, Triple H's first proper Raw after Mania because you know last year all got screwed up. Right? Maybe you'd want to do some big things and save a big moment for that. And I True. think Chad Gable could be. You announced Chad Gable Gunther. No, I I don't hate it at all. I I would actually think it's more interesting if Sammy were to lose. Yeah, and like I I think. Gunther should go on to something a bit bigger eventually, but losing it to Gable could finally give like Sammy doesn't need that mm. title. Giving it to Gable, giving that story to Gable is a way bigger thing yeah. for him in his career. It would be the biggest thing he's ever done. So yeah, 
I, I do like that idea way more. I, I was figuring that Sammy would lose, actually. I was like, oh, this match is going to be so good, and it's going to be like classic Sammy. You think he's got it, and then he just gets crumbled. I think back to NXT. We review so much yeah. old NXT, and like week by week, that was his it, story for years. It makes Gunther even more like, oh, when's this guy going to lose? Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't Sorry, know. Sammy. I think I love Sammy, but yeah. him winning the IC title isn't the moment we want. We want him to win the world title, yeah, yeah. right? And that's something we should be, be building for. I genuinely, though, am excited for Sami Zayn. Oh, versus Gunther. it's going to be amazing. Like, that match just sounds We so did good. have it on Raw, didn't we, like sometime last year, but not as like a yeah. big pay-per-view match, certainly not as a Mania match. Yeah, they're so going to go out there. It's going to be awesome. Be crazy, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. WrestleMania is shaping up to, to look like a pretty good Mania, like in years, and there's two nights and there's a lot going on. There's that tag ladder thing that's going to be added and... And all sorts of crazy stuff. But so far, looking pretty good. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Uh, another thing I noticed, I don't think we talked about it on Sunday. Did you hear about uh, NXT commentator Booker T, who's on one tonight? I'll oh, just yeah. say it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about CM Punk on his podcast, saying that last week uh, we mentioned that CM Punk was there with the NXT peeps. He was hanging out, I guess, training all day and watched the show. And Booker says that there was... Almost an altercation, and then I've never seen a backpedal like, "Oh, well, there were really, why like really what? wasn't an altercation, but there's almost an can, altercation." Can you imagine? Like, this is essentially what he did. He went on his podcast and he went, "Can't talk about it." Hey, uh, Braden, you know, you know who came to visit me at work today? Who? John Pollock. Yeah, yeah. Shit almost went down between us, but uh, I'm, I sure. can't really tell you anything tell about you it sure. anyway. Like, everyone be like, "Sorry, what?" Yeah. What do you mean there was an altercation, and then? Uh, a few people kind of fact check. I believe Sean Ross Sapp was like, ah, it looks like there wasn't. Like everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sources like, what altercation? backstage didn't know like, what anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. What altercation? And uh, I, and it, it, it definitely gives me two ways. Cause like, I love Booker T to me. He is a fucking legend and he's hilarious and it'll always be hilarious to me, but he had a habit of doing this kind of stuff in those years that maybe people forget. He wasn't mm. in NXT as a commentator. He was, he was out there doing weird shit and saying weird shit to, to almost kind of stay buzzing, you he, know? He's always, I love Booker T, and he doesn't need to do this kind of stuff is what I'm saying. Like, you're Booker T, man. It, like, it's weird, isn't it? And But Bad Bunny doesn't have a song about CM Punk. He's got a song about Bad, Booker T, and you still wanted to, like, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. It's you, you hear Book on commentary sometimes where I feel maybe he's just really good at playing the character. Sure. But, I feel there are times when someone says something and you hear him go all quiet and he sounds pissed off that someone's made a certain joke or whatever. I mean, and before Punk was coming back, you know, Booker was saying like... Uh, he was going off on him. He was like, ah, oh, he got fired. He didn't, he didn't leave. He got fired. Why would you want someone who got fired? Blah, blah, blah. Going all that. I can imagine like Punk making a, a funny pally comment, which I'm pretty sure he's done on TV already yeah. i think when he was on nxt yeah i think he said something like pally pally with book and book was like what did he just say <laughs> <laughs> and phil's probably walking off smiling ah it was nice see you, book. book and book is like oh i'm gonna kick that guy's ass yeah i don't it's just uh, like why i i watched the clip of him saying that and i'm like man i i, I really genuinely love he makes me laugh all he's the a, time he's, he's bizarre he's just so interesting but like why did you need to say that i just mm. thought that was weird so uh, there'll be other weird stuff he says on this episode of NXT, though. Yeah. Because that's every week. Yeah. Because Booker T is always on one, but we love you, Book. It is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. And let's talk about NXT from that date, from tonight. And we kick off things with a matchup here. The new and improved heel version of Roxanne Perez mm -hmm. comes out. You know she's heel because... She's got a very tight ponytail, dark eyeshadow, all the, there wasn't really dark lipstick, but she's wrestling. So I don't even think you need that for when you wrestle, but dark makeup counts here. As uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say she changed her look too much, but her hair normally, different. normally her hair is like let down, whereas it was all tied up okay. here and stuff. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Booker T, who's like, obviously has connections with Roxanne training her and everything. Who's been always supporter and on screens in, in storylines. 
he's just defending her. He's like, look, uh, sometimes that happened to me and uh, I got to do what I, I got to do. Booker's been a bad guy a lot. Yeah, career, exactly. Isn't he? It's like, ah, you got to do what you got to do. And she well, felt wronged. Yeah. And I've been there, man. He yeah, said, and I was like, see, I love Booker T. He's always right. Sometimes. Uh, Perez is just beating down here. It's Perez versus Tatum Paxley. This is all set up because Tatum's friend, the champ Lyra was injured by Roxanne and that's what set this up. So, uh, Roxanne, like pretty much they jump each other from the get go and they're just brawling around here, uh, before the match even starts. Eventually it's just Roxanne putting the boots to her when, uh, it's, it's Tatum who comes back with a pretty cool looking move, almost, almost like the page turner here for a near fall, which woke the crowd up. But eventually it's Roxanne who hits the pop rocks for the transition into the cross face, her new and improved finishing move for the tap out submission. So Roxy, the, the new mean Roxy, and you know, like when she lets go of it, finally, she does, she waits a few seconds and then like throws her down to the mat with this dirty look on her face. So yeah, she is just full on meanie. I, I think it's actually fitting her really well. Oh, yeah. um, we, I'm going to compare them because they're, you know, similar in age, came in similar time. They were together as a team, but Cora Jade never quite connected when she turned heel, I didn't think. Um, and I did think she had some stuff as a baby face. And I think Roxanne came across such a natural baby face that I found it hard to imagine her as a heel. But I think she's taken to it really comfortably and Agree. quite quickly. I yeah. think she um, she's one of the best, if not the best women's wrestler in NXT. And she's now adding a bit more of a, a vicious edge to her attacks and stuff, which looked good. And her promos throughout the night, I thought she sounded so confident and, uh, but justified this whole thing. It, it is very like the, the Drew McIntyre, the hangman page approach of turning heel where it's like, you've basically had enough because you have been wronged quite a lot. And she recognizes she's the best in the division and hasn't been anywhere near the title since it was stripped from her. So I think it's all justified. I think she's playing it great. Um, yeah, this this was the thumbs up for me. Yeah, really like this transition to this character. You kind of said it all, but like already makes way more sense than when just Cora Jade just had the paper skateboard and everything. I never believed anything. But in the ring, it's Roxanne. Like, again, even her move now has changed. Like her move is the pop rocks, which is a code red. Mm. Now she hits that even more viciously and doesn't pin you and turns it into a mean. Like, so there's a, yeah. lot, a lot just like than looking mean. There's a, there's a lot to it. And I think she's doing a good job considering she came in as the like very white meat baby face. Oh, I'm a kid. I'm happy to be here and all that stuff. But she's she's a long way from bus yeah, rides. It's co course, hasn't it? She needs that in her promo. I don't take the bus anymore. Yeah, I drive. What do they give people? The charger? Usually, you know, yeah, normally, yeah. Well, she's got a microphone and she does cut a promo. She says, It's been one week. I was trying to see if she was doing this on purpose for the Botchamania, the bare naked oh, ladies. It's been, it's, been, <laughs> it's been one week since you looked at me. She says, It's been one week since I've been out here asking for that title. And Lyra, you still haven't given it to me. So come on out here and give me what is mine. Give me the NXT Women's Championship because you're injured and you can't hold this title. And out comes Lyra Valkyria, but she's wearing a sling, her injured wing. Yeah. And a sling, right? The bird lady. She comes out and tries to attack her. They start to brawl here, and the, the like security and refs try to separate them. But then it is Roxanne who gets the upper hand and puts her back into like the cross face here and really wrenches on the like injury and yeah. everything. And then stands tall with the title, which uh, I mean, we can kind of jump ahead that this match is now official for. NXT stand and deliver because as we come back later from a break, Lyra kind of being checked on begs Ava for this match. Says, I want to face Roxy. She injured me and I'm not stepping down. So this match is official, which is going to be great. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. I, I really feel this is the first feud that Lyra can really get her teeth into as champion. Um, something about Blair Davenport hasn't quite clicked with me. I recognize she's good in ring and plays the kind of bully quite well but the the feud with lyra just didn't really connect and then since then lyra's been pretty much doing the like she's done a lot of the like mutual respect oh you can have a match sort of thing whereas now i think i think these two will gel really nicely in the ring together and uh both have 
like Roxanne's got a real reason she wants to win this. Lyra's got a real reason to want to beat her after everything she's done to her. So I think it's the most in- interesting feud for Lyra uh, yeah, so yeah. far. And I, I think this will be could be match of the night, actually. Like the last time we were like, yeah, it's cool. They're both baby faces and they're good wrestlers. The match should be good. And then we saw that it it, it, it was kind of weird, but now it's got a lot more different. Well, it had the whole yeah. triple threat element to yeah, it. Yeah, they stuff, added that. Right? Yeah. So now it's like it'll be a full on proper story match and everything. And I think these two women will deliver for sure. We go to the metaphor. We see Noam Dar backstage and he's angry. He's warming up for his match because our main event is Noam Dar versus Trick Williams. And Metaphor are all standing around with him. And as he's stretching, he's talking to himself and talking to them. Noam says, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on that Trick Williams. And Lash Legend behind him says, oh, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on him too. And they go, wait, what did you just say? And he's like, oh, what? I, I mean, uh, I mean, and they're interrupted as Alpha Academy show up here. And it's no Gable, though. It's just yeah. Otis, Maxine, and Tazawa. And they mention like, oh, like we're back here in NXT and they kind of talk about how they're they're here for maybe some reasons and maybe they're going to go to the locker room. Maybe they're going to talk to some people and metaphor don't seem to want too much of them. But something I did recognize here is Otis wearing a, a specific way he was dressed in the all black. Some people compare it to, to Chris Farley a lot. And here with Maxine on his arm, just like in Beverly Hills Ninja goes this way my dove mm-hmm. so i think he was referencing this movie right gotcha uh he also is uh said that he was once a fan of trick williams but after that kiss because we've seen otis oh flirt with right. Lash a lot. i forgot about so that. he yeah. was like kind of ah tr- tricks on my enemy yeah. list now yeah um but yeah fun little interaction with these guys they they're all pretty funny i think yeah no i'm dar otis yeah this our maxine yeah we see uh briggs goes into the ring and he grabs the microphone and he's like, I'm sorry, but I got something off to get off my chest. And he goes, Oba Femi, last week I watched you hurt my buddy and you did it with a smile. And I mean, you were just, you were just doing that out of ego to just woo the audience. And I didn't like that. Not one bit. So I saw what you did. So Oba, come on out here and face me like a man. So out comes Oba Femi. I love Obafemi's walk. There's some good walks in wrestling. We often walk around like Penta or Tajiri. Or Tajiri. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the <laughs> it's like a, a bigger Matt Riddle. Yeah. Yeah. We need, yeah, sadly, one of the best walks in wrestling has been retired. So yeah. we do the Shane O'Mac, I guess, now, which is more of a shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. But this, yeah, the little arm pumps. Yeah. It's good, good walks in wrestling. Yeah. But Oba's got his, he's huge. He's a big, yeah, big yeah. boy. Oba comes out and he's like, he, he mentioned the word relish a few times. I guess he, that's what he had on his hot dog earlier, <laughs> but he's, I relish the fact this, I relish the fact that pushing a man to the edge and hurting him, but I don't care about, he did mention. It's because Briggs said like, it was because you were smiling the whole time. Yeah, you were hurting my guy. Like, yeah, I enjoy what I do. Uh, Oba says, when I step through those rings and then he takes a second and he realizes that I just say, <laughs> when I step through those rings, when I step through those ropes, I don't care about emotion. The only thing that matters is results. And my results speak volumes. And Josh Briggs kind of starts yelling at him and says, yeah, well, I'm Josh Briggs. Let me introduce you to me, the man of mayhem. And I throw hands. So it says, fight me, put that title on the line. And Oba says, no, 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 Briggs. Don't say I didn't warn you. Like, don't let me do what I did to your friend, to you. When out comes, die, Jack. Yeah. He's like, wait, there's justice that needs to be <laughs> made done i don't know he so, comes out yeah that's right he comes out and uh looking fresh looking in his leather jacket yeah button up black shirt glasses on indoors he says uh that he he's a little interested in this conversation and, and briggs says hey shut up you want to be shaft <laughs> and then like they continue on and it takes him a second and then he's like wait a second did you did you just call me a wannabe shaft like like samuel l jackson shaft and briggs is like yeah he's like but and then he like looks at his arms. He's like, but but I'm white, <laughs> which got a very big reaction out of the crowd here. Um, it, I think it was what was funnier was the delay from Dijak because it was like going on. He's like, no, no, no. Go, sorry. Go back. What did you say? <laughs> um, I uh, I thought this was pretty funny. And I feel uh, Dijak's 
turn baby face we got that sense last week did I think. is it yeah okay. i think so or like turning what, like what he turned him baby face trying to murder this guy well he, end, he ended the feud with gacy i don't know I, threw I, him off a roof. I got the sense that he's like starting to baby face himself um and i think we need to see him bring more of his twitter character yeah i think that's what the screen this and i felt that this was kind of like a little bit like that yeah like obviously a planned spot i'm sure yeah but like still like pretty funny i saw i got a lot of reaction online as well but uh basically he's like like hey you're you're calling a shot for the north american title but like there's other people yeah. here as well and he kind of goes to turn around to leave oba goes to leave is like ah i'm over this and it's briggs who shoves dijack into oba which then causes all three of them to brawl and they're kind of separated and Oba kind of smiles, so maybe possibly we're getting some sort of meat madness in NXT as well with the big lads wrestling. So it's it's told said later in the night that next week we've got um, Duke Hudson versus Josh Briggs and Sean uh, Spears versus DiJack, and it says with North American title implications. Now, I hope we're getting more the the multi meat match. Uh, I think that would be really fun. Don't do it as a ladder or whatever, but yeah. do like Ober, Dijak, Duke, Briggs, Von, and I guess Sean Spears. <laughs> but I think could be really fun. And what makes it even funnier is, you know, and I, I don't care for the tribalism. I like both products, but you know that there's going to be so many people because there's talks of this meat match for Mania as well, yeah, like yeah. Bronson and Otis and all that. Yeah. It's all go, oh, but it was meant to be happening in AEW, but it didn't happen. So right. fuck it. Snoozy that, lose. that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> uh yeah. So after as it fades out, you I didn't mention that. Yeah, it cuts to Sean Spears mm. watching this. Yeah, the, like, the big meaty Sean Spears. The talk about the downfall of a man and his ego. And then as he leaves the locker room, Gacy is like creeping in the background and then like pulls himself in. He's like a comic book horror monster. So I think he was talking about Dijak, which is the match set up and again which makes me think that like now gacy's on his side because yeah. he's he's watching on right right so gacy and Dijak are a team i think going so going forward I maybe so. but yeah the fucking but, chairman yeah I, I hope if if it is just a little another mini tournament to have a singles who do you see being the guy against uh Oba, or do you think it will be a multi-man? I mean, yeah. So after this promo, I was like, oh, great. It's going to be like a triple threat. And then later, Ava Rain is like, I'll just get to it. Ava Rain yeah. is like, hey, Duke Hudson, you, you're pretty good. You want to be in the North American title picture? I have some ideas. And then we're like, oh, sweet. Maybe it'll be a four-way. And no, it's like contender matches, essentially. They didn't. It was weird. The wording, they didn't say, they didn't announce a little tournament like they have with this tag team yeah. thing at all. They just said, with implications right so i don't know if it's just you know go out and impress me sure and Ava will put you in the match or do we have Obafemi just destroy them all in both matches and the classic ah you'll face all of them yeah i'm not sure because i think it would be better with all these different guys and me giving too. them something to do for wrestlemania weekend but i also think the tag title match might be a few teams as well i think there might be some some malarkey going on gotcha. i think there's a few teams involved in that as well mm. so multi multi people matches yeah we'll see if that happens or it's just oba versus Briggs, like, yeah as they kind of teased here, maybe so we'll see i just hope it's not oba sean spears no i like he came back at a time where it's like it's it's this show in a few weeks so it's like he's probably on it which mm. i'm like i really just don't want to but that. in a multi-man cool sure. fine yeah with his chairs we go to a recap of trick williams Last week and his promo talking about how he's coming back and he's looking for Mello, which set up the match for Noam Dar here tonight. But we go to our next match. It is in this, this tag tournament, if you will. The winner of this next match, the team goes on into a triple threat and the winner of that faces the Wolf Dogs at Stand and Deliver. So we go to Axiom and Nathan Frazier, or as I call it, the Power Rangers, come out and then they face the team that I think their theme sounds like the Power Rangers, which was very funny. Yeah. So no quarter catch crew taking on Axiom and Frazier, but the two people in this match taking them on, not the two we thought it would be because later on, no quarter catch crew or the NQCC, as exactly. the kids call it these days, uh, they said that the cup is also on the line, but we not we're not we assumed Dempsey would be the one putting the cup on the line, but instead here he is in this tag team match with Miles Bourne. 
So Miles and Charlie versus Axiom and Frazier. So these two go at it, all four of them going at it. There's some uh, great moves from Axiom and Frazier here, a huge kick to uh, Dempsey for a near fall. And then they hit some crazy in sequence Tope Suicidas, one where Axiom's face just lands into the commentary table. Uh, eventually there's this crazy DDT on Miles from Axiom for a great near fall. Dempsey tags back in and hits a nasty looking wheelbarrow suplex. The strength on this kid is pretty impressive. Axiom though tags in, he starts hits like the standing stars and all these flying moves when Miles eventually is back in and impresses here with like this pop-up power slam and then a spin out. Is this like the tour of the islands from like the Joe Cobb, Jeff yeah. Cobb move where he spins and spins and spins and slams you down here, which was great, but Axiom breaks it up. Eventually miles is up on the top rope, but eats a Spanish fly from the top, which is great, which sets up for the four fifty. And as Dempsey is trying to make a break for the save, at the same time, Axiom hits him with the golden Ooh. ratio, uh, which this reminded me of when Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns hit the spear and the the sister Abigail, like at the same time. Right. Because as the guy like lands, he ran at him with this kick. So yeah. it was very on the money. So Axiom and Frazier advance in this tag tournament. But I thought this was a pretty sweet match. And I mean, we've kind of been jumping on how awesome charlie dempsey is and like regal's kid is pretty good and maybe if he you know gets a little older and has some more like charisma and character mm. like he could be a pretty big deal because he's such a good wrestler but watching this also his tag team partner miles born man it, yeah i i thought exactly the same it's been a while since we've seen miles born i don't feel we've seen him on nxt actually wrestle a whole bunch yeah and this like really opened my eyes to him i thought he was a uh, uh, a really good base here for axiom and fraser was catching some of these guys Crazy with ease, moves, yeah. like like cesaro-esque catching it and yeah the you mentioned the sort of tour of the island slam but uh i i thought he looked really impressive as like a power dude which i haven't really seen him in before. he looks like a young randy orton back yeah. in the day uh no i i was impressed with him the others obviously we, we've seen their praises quite a lot but i i thought this was a pretty fun match the right team advanced i think yeah um but yeah i, I enjoyed this one Look, I, I love Miles Bourne and I, I love Dempsey, but I definitely think there'll be the next chapter of NXT post stand and deliver, right? Yeah. Like there's there'll be a lot for more of them and stuff. But I mean, Axiom and Nathan Frazier, I'm not too into the characters. I call them the Power Rangers, but when it comes to the matches, there's like blink and you miss it yeah. so fast. These two have got to be some of the fastest guys in WWE. So like, really, these two could be main roster ready, and people would be like impressed with some of the stuff they do. So. Very, very fun match. Probably my favorite like wrestling match on this show was mm. was probably this one. The main event was pretty good too, though actually. So, but I, I like this. So they advance, and then the next two teams have to face them. Which again, I think something is like so. There's yeah, there's going to be a triple threat yeah tag match right to determine who faces uh, Wolf the Dogs. Wolf Dogs. Yeah, right, right. So so far it's LWO and Axiom and Fraser. Okay. Yeah. We get a recap of Von Wagner and Mr. Stone from last week and how Mr. Stone got beat by Lexus King. And we see NXT Anonymous. Remember that? That's still a thing. And they're watching mm -hmm. Von and Stone having this interaction last week when it seems Stone is angry that Von came out for the save. Like, hey, I told you don't. He's angry that he carried him away. Like a child. Yeah. He says, you carried me like a baby. <laughs> He's like, it was humiliating. Yeah. And then kind of walks off and mm. moves on. So are we going Splitsville with these two? I don't know, but I, I like the more serious tone. I liked how Robert Stone, you know, wrestled like a wrestler last week and not just like a comedy. Wrestled better than King last week. Yeah, and not like just a comedy manager. And I, like it is humili humiliating. If I was carried off by someone yeah. live on TV, I'd be pretty pissed, I think. I'd, like it, I'd I don't know if you could carry me, but I could carry you could probably carry me, but I could carry you. I hadn't I wouldn't feel no shame in no. carrying my friend out. <laughs> but I guess because he lost. He, yeah, he's just he looks like a kid. Yeah. It's just the, Fair the next step to like making these two a bit more serious, I guess. I think of super bad when Seth says yeah. <laughs> I would do that for you. <laughs> we see the wolf dogs, they're backstage. Uh they're talking about how they they go out for dinner, but uh Baron Corbin references that Braun makes him pay for the check and braun jokes like oh well you know a dog's gotta go and a dog's gotta go so yeah it sounded like braun invited corbin out on the date 
He's like, let me take you out for dinner. Yeah. It's on me. And then they go and out then and skip. then Braun left him out. <laughs> I kind of like how they do these things in their promos, like talking about stuff they've done. Yeah. 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 Referencing that they, they're friends, but they're not really yeah. friends. And very wrestling and then this is what i i like i love these two this is the best shit baron corbin thing right, i don't so care good. i don't really care about his wrestling still but like as long as he hangs out with like braun breaker he's yeah he's golden here because braun is just so funny uh this is when otis and akira tozawa show up and they mentioned that they won in on this tag team tournament down here in nxt and braun kind of laughs at them but then says you know what you two are incredible athletes so i mean doesn't matter if you win next week because it's only going to be the same two things, the spear and the end of days, uh, which is also like the uh, Bray Wyatt Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> double team move. I was referencing. True, true. It pretty much is the same move. Uh, so yes, Akira Tozawa and Otis are going to be in the match next week against the Wolf Dogs. Yeah. It's like an eliminator match. Right. If they beat the champions, they then get the title shot. So I assume uh, that will yeah, see, that's what I mean. Like, there's so many teams already that I can't see uh, Alpha Academy being in this match. Okay, you think they just lose? I think they just lose because I think it could I wouldn't. Be... Do, I wouldn't do anything screwy with this team. I think they should be going in strong. So I, th I think they do just beat them. Right. Um. But it's the other three teams where do we see something there? Because I was really surprised LWO didn't qualify for the ladder match. Yeah. Yeah. So with uh. Now just Berto and Garza being in that match over them. I could see these two being on Stan and Liver instead. They've had more of a presence on NXT than yeah. I'd say Tazara and Otis. And have. like again, uh look at the the three way. It's Good Brothers, LWO, Axiom, and Frazier, which all three of those teams with the Wolf Dogs is a perfect should be in four it. way. Yeah. Yeah. They should all be on the show. Good brothers don't shouldn't be on the show, but they'll probably be on yeah. the fucking show. So, <laughs> so there you go. Uh so yeah, next week, somewhat of an eliminator match with Alpha Academy. We go to our next match, the returning Sol Ruka. I love the splash thing that like covers off the last yeah. segment that is like into the beach thing. It's it's great. Sol Ruka sporting a new uh, sleeve tattoo. Clearly, mm -hmm. she uh, was inspired on her time off here. But she's taking on the young Brinley Reese. Brinley, she don't get hyped. She stay hyped. Exactly. Reese yeah. here. Uh, very similar to the Thea Hale and Mojo Raleigh character. Just very energetic. Yes. And hyper. Uh, but Sol Ruka is back and she's kind of known for doing a lot of kind of impressive things in the ring. And I'd say both of them were doing like flippy hand springs into stuff. Brindley does a like the buckshot but standing where she like front flips, lands on her feet and clotheslines you. Is it the... It's... Woods is move, right? Out, out of the woods? Somewhere like something that. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. Sorry, honor roll. Honor roll. Honor yeah, roll. yeah. I know because in 2K we would give it to hangman to, hang to make it look like the buckshot. Uh, but that looked pretty impressive as well. Um, all I know is Idris and Malik are ringside for Brindley Reese because they've been kind of a, a team lately. And Booker T hates Idris and Malik, so by association, just hates Brindley Reese. He he hated everyone. Like as soon as Brindley's making her entrance, he says. I don't like I this at all. I don't like this at all. And it's, he's had this, like, he hasn't liked Malik or Idris at all for reasons. And as you said, hasn't liked Brinley Reese. And then he's going like, so Ruka, what's she done for me lately? And Vic is like, she's been injured. Yeah. But since coming back, she's just been, why is she faffing around with Blair Davenport? Because Blair Davenport attacked her and injured her for a year. Oh. Well, she should be focusing on winning matches and and getting money. She's like, look, she just she's back. winning. She's winning a match now. Like he yeah. hated everyone, and it it actually like Booker is funny at times. But I thought he really took away from this match where yeah. I was actually impressed. I thought both looked pretty good here. Yeah, both were doing some cool moves. That what's that move out of the corner? Christopher Downing just used to do it. I iconoclasm or some weird oh, okay. shit. Yeah, she did one of those as well. But then the move that everyone came to see, the soul snatcher, mm -hmm. the crazy looking cutter out the corner there. I don't know how she does. I can't even explain it. I, that's how crazy it is. It's like, like an inverted flip. Inverted stunner. what? Is she, yeah. How does she do that? It's insane. And I love Vic. Has been like a lot of people have been doing this since, but no one like her. No one in WWE does it, but yeah. a lot of people on the indies have been doing it. But everyone does a cutter, but this one looks crazy. Uh, I was really impressed with Sol here. I, I think she's someone who we saw uh, 
kind of add something to her game every single week. She improved really quickly. And she wasn't on TV that long before she got injured. Being out for almost a year, you would think she'd have some ring rust or taken a step back or whatever. But I thought she looked good. And this is the most we've seen from Brindley Reese here as well. It This didn't feel like two like, real green ro rookies at it. I, I thought both showed off a little bit of an experience here that I was surprised with. I, I was impressed. Yeah, yeah. Like, Brindley is still very, very new, and she's losing here pretty quickly. But for what she did was pretty impressive to some other people that we see who are trying to, you know, break it break it out here. Yeah. So, And I love me some Sol Ruka. I think she could uh, go on to some big things, too. We get a commercial for the Bray Wyatt documentary. Yeah. yeah. Um, Becoming Immortal. I hear the voice of Bo Dallas. I loved this commercial with Bo, like narrating it and saying, like reading that thing that I think Bray posted on Twitter, right? About pro wrestling being a love story and all that. Right. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. It comes out, I think, April 1st. It's right before Mania. Yeah. Uh, narrated by The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, this sounds awesome. Good yeah. Good job, Debbie. This looks sure. really good. And I assume this is going to be building to a hall of fame announcement for bray as yeah well. yeah absolutely so uh, i know we'll be watching it right away and po probably chatting about it pretty pretty quickly so definitely looking to check that out they've been they've been doing some good stuff with all the documentaries but mm. this one obviously a lot of people will be, be tuning in for that one rip bray we go to oh we didn't mention that um blair what? davenport attacked oh Ruka sorry yes match. yeah yes and then booker t was like ah i told you the the camera shot here though you had brinley giving because brinley's whole thing is um like she she learns from every loss right like she doesn't take a loss as a bad thing because you'll learn and um, for next time so after the bat she's giving a thumbs up to to uh soul and then blair davenport attacks soul from behind but the camera shot you see blair brinley sorry yeah blair attacking soul from behind in the camera shot you see in the distance brinley idris and malik just leaving. <laughs> really just gone, hey, good match, buddy. And then she's getting beaten up. Yeah. Ah, we're okay. Yeah, we it's don't like, need to save her. Yeah. It's like the three of you could have maybe saved her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so the, the storyline with those two and Brindley was like, hey, she's going to lose and then she'll know about it. But afterwards, she was like, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. It's fine. And then, yeah, Blair. So Blair Sol Ruka coming soon as well. Yeah. Because Blair's the one who took her out and still isn't done. She didn't really, like, attack the knee, though. Because, like, now no. Soul has a knee brace. You could have been like, I'll just, might as well just take you out again. But yeah. She didn't. So she's not that mean. We go to Gigi Dolan and Ren St. Clair backstage. And Gigi's talking to Ren about last week. And she's like, So, you know, she hit me in the, you know, and then I hurt, hit her in the, you know, and it, it hurts, obviously, but the ref just only saw mine. She's like explaining everything when Ariana Grace comes in and calls Gigi. Georgina, as Gigi's like, did she just, what did she just call me? And she says, I have a gift for you and pulls out a sash. But as Ariana's always says, Miss NXT, this says Miss NXT in training. It's actually a Ms. 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 NXT in training. Like MS? MS, wait, yeah. Like, <laughs> wait, like Ms. is when you don't want to go as Miss or Mrs. You go as a Ms. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry. You, you might have to spell it out. M MS. MS is like a Ms. Is Ms. Okay. M I double -S, S is Miss. Miss. So what's the difference? M R S is Mrs. And Ms. is Ms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right. It's, I I don't know. It's I, I would have some Ms's at school. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've had a few Ms's at school. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, Gigi's now Miss NXT. Yes, because she lost the match, uh, even though yeah. it was some cheating involved. So she's going to be. I mean, Gigi needs something. She's so bland. Yeah. So maybe this will work. Uh, I Take haven't really pageant. enjoyed. I I enjoy Ariana. I haven't enjoyed this, like not wanting to hit people and all that sort of thing. Uh, but maybe these vignettes will be fun. I we'll don't know. see. Yeah, I want her in like classic. She's gonna make her like a classic. Yeah. Debutante and all that stuff. We get a video from Ridge Holland, uh, sent in from social media. And he's saying that uh, things just aren't going the way he thought they were, especially coming back here in NXT. And he mentions that, I guess I got to do what I didn't want to do. 
And as he like walks away and the video fades, it cuts back to the crowd watching this video. And someone in the crowd just yells, retire, which I was just like, oh, man, but also really made me laugh. This, <laughs> Yeah, this whole thing really hasn't worked. It's Not like I hate this. It's I don't hate Ridge. I hate this. It's I know you all think I'm a monster. We don't No. <laughs> I know you're all mad about what I did to Gallus. We really, no, actually, we're really, really, really not I'm happy about that. Actually. I know you're upset. I hurt Ilya Dragunov. It's fine. He's in the main event at San <laughs> he's, he's fine, bro. He's good. He's good. He's good. Well, I'm going to become what you all want me to be. D don't. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Ridge, just, just find Seamus. You're, you're good, mate. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we, it's okay. It's okay you hurt someone. So I don't think he's retiring, but he's going to become a monster. Uh, Ridge, I think so. Yeah, Ridge the fridge. Does he? Uh, does he wear a silly hat or a mask or something? Oh no, not that kind of monster. <laughs> well, like Frankenstein's monster comes out. He he's gonna have something. Yeah, that, that's what I got from this. Is he's gonna just embrace being put him in the meat match? Why not? Right. Use Muz when you are not sure of a woman's marital status. If the woman is unmarried and over thirty, or if she prefers being addressed with a marital status neutral title. Is neutral. Ms. So I don't want people to know I'm Ms. I'm Ms. Sounds like when you want to cheat on your husband to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, probably. What about guys? What do we get? Mr. We're just Mr. Regard. We don't change if we're married, do we? You just do the old take the ring off thing. Yeah, yeah. True. I don't know. I'm not married. No, you turn the location off. <laughs> <laughs> Plain mode. <laughs> I watched him, Ricky Sinicki, the John right. Cena movie. They all like lie to their wives so they can get on a plane and they're like, good thing we left the phones at home. So they think we're at home, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's a good one. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Burner phone. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but that movie still was bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go to Tony D'Angelo and the family. Mm. They come out. Tony's new theme. I mean, it. It's not his old theme. I liked his old theme. This one's more like Godfather mafia theme. It sound. makes more sense with what they're trying to do with the character. I think his old theme was very like cheeky chappy. Yeah. Italian mobster. Whereas he's trying to go for something a bit serious now. I don't think that music would hit. Uh, I did think it, it fitted better than I think. Didn't we just hear it when he won a match or something last week? It right. kind of came out of nowhere and we were like, oh. I thought this presentation was seeing the family walk to the ring all slowly, dressed up a little nicer than usual. I thought it worked. So the whole family come out here. You said walking slowly. Uh, Luca Crucifino walking very slowly. He's like, I don't know how to walk this slow. <laughs> this is no one walks this slow unless the people on the sidewalks. Oh, it's just always in front of me, oh, man. <laughs> no matter where I yeah. go. But anyways, they're walking out. They're all in their suits. They're all done up to the nines. The 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 Don looking real. Donish looking like the godfather here and he's got a microphone and he introduces us to the family here Stax, Rizzo, Luca and he says wisdom equals power and I have all the power here in NXT and soon I'll have the gold which will give me even more power he then mentions his new consigliere yes Luca Crucifino mm -hmm. pour one out for AJ Galante mm -hmm. uh, he then says uh, I've shown everyone that I will break the unbreakable because I've shown everyone what I can do. And I promise that's what I will do at Stand and Deliver. When Ilya Dragunov shows up on the screen, he's not there, but via satellite, he says, hey, Tony, you left me on a bridge alone with my thoughts last week, which just wasn't a good idea for you. He didn't have his phone, I guess, because we were joking like, well, you can just Uber or whatever. But maybe they also took his, mm. his phone because then that would suck. Getting home. It's like if oh. they took his phone as well. It's like today's age, you go, okay, well, like yeah. Uber, like Ilya looks like he goes on like Walked. 10 mile runs through freezing He's snow. Like, huh. I think he'd be okay walking back from the bridge. Yeah, like <laughs> he'd probably jump to swim. It's home. probably not that far <laughs> yeah. from the where they live and he the probably arena. like stayed out for a whole yeah. weekend just fighting whatever animals they have in Florida mm. near the bridges. Uh, Ilya says, you left me alone with my thoughts, which was a bad idea because that just made me think of what I'm going to do to you and mentions that uh, you won't beat me and said and deliver no matter what you do. You might think you have the wisdom and all the power, but you won't. And D'Angelo says that Ilya, you're a fighting champion. So next week 
He set up a match with his right hand man, Stax. So Ilya versus Stax next week. And nice. says, yeah, which sounds great. And ends the promo with Ilya at Stand and Deliver. It will be your burial as his music hits. Yeah, Il- Ilya versus Stax actually sounds pretty good. Stax always impresses us. And I think this is his one of his biggest opportunities, singles wise, to prove himself. Yeah. Uh, there was a line from uh, Tony earlier where he says, I have respect for your mother bringing you over here from Russia, which isn't the case at all. He moved from Russia to Germany. And maybe he met there and yeah, I don't know. But then the whole story with Baron Corbin was you left your family behind in Germany to oh. come over here to be a, right. a wrestler. So I, I don't know what Ilya is. Too much talking about mums in wrestling. Today. Bert, he's, Ilya's got burner phones. Location yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I half like this new presentation for Tony D. I think, I think he should have done something properly heelish at this point. And, and I know kidnapping a man and dumping off a, a bridge isn't the nicest thing to do, but it comes in that hokey cinematic yeah. thing that was, I, can't was, quite, was hokey. I yeah. can't quite take seriously. And I think if you had like the whole family do more of a turn and just, you know, be Ilya to a pulp the other week and be like, nah, the, the fun and games is behind us. We're, we're serious and we mean serious business now. This whole presentation would work way more. Whereas, I don't know, is he supposed to be a... Is he a heel? Is he a heel? Yeah. Is he a, and maybe we're going to get more answers down the week, down the road. But I really think he should have done something like pretty nasty at this point. Yeah. And to justify all of this. Because he became a babyface. He got over in the last year. Like, yeah. he became champions. And, like, it really... He really stepped up. Yeah. Because for a while, he, he was just kind of coasting. And they have decided quickly to flip him to this big, serious singles role. But they've changed his the way he looks and the theme and everything, but it's still mafia. So it's still like hokey and outdated as hell. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know what you thought it would look more like because the We're, cinematic vision that they had last week came across very like hokey. not good. So Whereas like, if it's just bringing in Crucifino for him and stacks to fucking murder this him guy, up. you know, yeah, like yeah. maim him like the head of this match. Like, yeah. Like there's, yeah. Because it's like, well, is he still a baby face? Will he still be cheered? It's, it's weird. It's yeah. kind of strange. Because, like, if you kept him the same way with that music and everything, the possibility you got more cheers in, Ilya mm-hmm. in Philly, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Like, or maybe maybe they're saving the turn for the match. Like, maybe, like, that's when mm-hmm. his heavies, like, help out. Because, like, don't get me wrong. I, I kind of been saying, like, the Mafia stuff is is kind of ran its course, at least. just It's just so, like, overdone. And, like, yeah, Goodfellas, one of my favorite movies of all time. But, like, I watch Goodfellas when I these guys are like recreating things all the time and it's funny and stuff. But I say all that. I still do think this there is room like in WWE main roster for this character because there isn't that right now. And like you don't have to go legit mafia character to get a mafia character. I think little nods that he was doing before were Mm. kind of enough being like, oh, hey, like, you know, finger on nose. Like, yeah, Paulie's locked in the trunk or something like that. Now he's like legit got like kidnapping people and like I, i'm just like you try to go not goofy and somehow you've made it a little bit more goofy for yeah. me somehow but i'm i'm still interested in the match you know what like as much as i'm kind of sounding a bit negative on it i do think that these two can deliver a, a good nxt title match but can they stand as well yeah exactly yeah. will they will they steal the show you think that tony's gonna turn and win the title i do actually um I don't really know. And then Ilya. I mean, you could go, yeah, you could go trick beats Ilya down the road. I guess that makes more sense. But I don't know if they, if they want to commit to this character, I think he needs to like fully turn. And, right. you know, he's got his lackeys with him now. Yeah. Um, if you want to move Ilya up, I don't know. You said you said Monday, uh, the Raw after Mania, is Chad Gable coming out to, to face Gunther? I think Ilya comes yeah. out to face Gunther. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he's he's got to be moving up soon. Yeah. And in a Triple H led, well, like WWE, yeah. he's going to be keener to bring him in sooner rather than previously when Vince yeah. would probably look at this and be like, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but but yeah, looking forward to this this title match. I think I think they'll uh, they'll put on a good one. We see 
who do we see here? Thea Hale and Riley Osborne backstage. And Thea kind of apologizes to Riley. Like, hey, I'm sorry. I've been, it wasn't the real me. JC kind of put me up to it. And I, I hope we can still be friends. And they kind of say it at the same time. And they go, yeah, still be friends. And he goes, all right, well, I got to get ready for my match. So I'll see you out there. And Chase, you all go off with them to, to get ready for this match. When we come back for break before that match, we get a video for Carmen Petrovic and Lola Weiss. They both post some like karate, martial Showing arts. Showing up them kicking stuff. All the skills. And Lola sent one in being like, oh, yeah, we'll watch this. So this is hyping up this mixed martial arts match happening next week. Lola's kicks need to look like this in the ring. I'm not saying Lola's bad in ring. Yeah. But like, like she's very good right at yeah. this uh this is next week i guess I, I think so yeah yeah take put it on the pay-per-view yeah <laughs> do it we go to riley osborne versus drew gulak who will be stepping in for charlie dempsey in the no quarter catch crew rounds match for the nxt heritage cup mm. i did all right so go go power rangers i got to hear one more time which i was like that definitely sounds like power rangers which made me go google it and i was right uh, so this starts off round one here, five rounds. We see Drew keeps like wrenching at Riley's arm and keeps trying to go for it. Uh, Vic Joseph is asking Booker some questions about what's going on. Uh, I think about Thea Hale and JC and Booker's like, I don't know. Stop asking so many questions. Walter Cronkite, which I thought was a very funny line for Booker. He's always on one that Booker. Riley comes back with some crazy arm drags for uh, some fast action and then Climbs up top and hits a shooting star press and right away wins the first fall in round one here. Wasn't a fan of that, to be honest. Um, like, essentially, if this was a normal match, in Riley two, Osborne minutes. would have beat G Drew Gulak in two minutes. Yeah. Which I'm like, hmm, okay, it's it's rounds, it's two out, three falls. Okay. But I, I thought it should have been more of a a surprise flash pin that this guy is meant to be kind of the leader of this yeah like tough like proper wrestling shooting star press and you got beaten with a shooting star press in two minutes saw jeff hardy get up from a shooting star press yeah <laughs> uh so not a fan of that as a like structure yeah. for the first four i i thought it would have made more sense for gulak to get the first and then maybe Osborne steal the second. Well, Drew was pissed, so he just goes to leave. Mm. And Riley stops him with this huge tope con hilo to the outside and then goes him back inside. And then Drew yells at him, drop down, which he then drops down and hits him with a nice looking sunset, like flip into the pin. He does it really nice. It, he kind of caught uh Osborne midair with yeah. it, which Osborne, they were doing like the leapfrog drop down. Relax. And he just catches yeah. him with it, which looked very smooth he's used this move a few times and it's very impressive and he gets the pin here on riley so now it's one a piece here and right after the bell he elbows him nah. anyways and the ref is like what are you doing get out of here when we come back from break round three is already underway and we see the gulak on the top rope kind of kicks out of the corner and gets the gulak in on riley here which then eventually uh no sorry he's about to tap but he doesn't and the bell rings right so it's still a draw going into round four. And this is when Thea Hale is ringside with Chase U, but Jasmine and JC come down to the ring to, to watch the match too. And Chase U are kind of hiding Thea away from her a little bit. But then there's a part where uh, Riley comes in with like these Ranas for a near fall and backslides for a near fall. And then Thea just randomly goes to attack the two, like Thea, because JC gives her like the elf, like yeah. you're a loser. And Thea goes to jump, but Chase, you were trying to stop this, which Drew and Riley are just on the top rope for a while. You pointed this out to me. You're like, they're just sitting there for a while until finally Jasmine Nix, I think it is, is like, oh, and grabs the leg. Well, allowing It wasn't her. They needed to wait because the others during this brawl with like Thea and Duke and Chase and all that, yeah. they... Uh, they go into the ring. Like, so Kemp and everyone's involved. So they get into the ring on this brawl, which distracts the ref. Riley's setting up for a vertical suplex, superplex, and Jasmine grabs his ankle, which I actually quite liked. I haven't seen this much. Yeah. So it ends up, he just falls back and Gulak lands on top of him for the pin. But they were waiting up there for like 30 seconds and for everyone to get into position and just like... 
feel that time, like fight on the ropes, punching each other or something. I, right. It just, I would have thought like a Gulak would have been a bit yeah. like he more of pissed. a vet to like fill in the gaps there, but they just sat up there. I'm like, why, why have they stopped? Why have they yeah. stopped wrestling while all this is happening? He almost seemed mad in this match. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, Riley, we've only really seen him in this like chase you role. I, I know he's done like some other stuff before that, but not a whole lot. I, a lot of guys can do like moonsaults and hurricane ranas. I haven't seen like really any character stuff from aside from the Thea Hale stuff. I think the most interesting thing would be if he like turns and joins JC and, and goes completely like a new character because this is just like really bland guy. And I, Gulak, like he trains people. His gimmick is he's wrestling, and I didn't necessarily think they had a good match here for. And I don't like rounds matches either. And mm. I, I know something was a little off for me. I, I think there's promise, obviously, for for Riley, but I just this character and this all this stuff isn't working. Yeah, he he's coming across pretty bland to me. Yeah, um, yeah. I and mean, Gulak can be pretty bland too. So, I Gulak. I mean, a good wrestler. I, I I enjoy Gulak's wrestling. Yeah. when he's allowed to, I think there have been times in his WWE run where his characters got in the way when they've not taken him seriously but i think in this in this role in this like no quarter you said it before they need to win more okay they've got the heritage cup now but they lose just a lot just hit him with a shooting star and press yeah and got considering beat. this guy is like the the like the vet the, teacher. the one who is like training all these guys yeah it's i i didn't like the structure of the match i i didn't think they gelled particularly well and just the the ending was like so telegraphed with the just st sitting on the top rope forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like Riley, like could be, could become something. I, I think maybe you need him to be a bland baby face before for return to like mean something and to yeah. like break Thea's heart or whatever. But um, I, I hope we see that and we see a bit of a evolution of him because Cool. You you do you do a moonsault. A, a lot of people shooting do. star, a shooting star. And it yeah, pinned Drew Gulak. Yeah, the rest of the guys on the quarter catch crew could be like, oh, there's some quarter. Yeah, here. there's a little quarter, and it's the shooting star. We'll, we'll have Dempsey do that like his stuff. their training videos should be them hitting shooting star presses and learning how to fucking how kick to out counter, of it, it. yeah, <laughs> and counter it and everything. Uh, out come next. What do we have? Oh, we saw uh, uh, Kalani Jordan shows up. She's looking for someone. Is that? Uh, uh, she's looking for Bl who? Sorry, who did she? Blair was it? Yeah, Blair. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to say Blair. Oh, I think because I skipped over this part here, which is Brooks Jensen leaving the NXT arena, going out through the parking lot, and Fallon shows up, and she's like, "What are you doing? Don't do this! Don't do this!" And he's leaving, and he's got his bags packed, and he's like, "No, don't do this! Really, don't be like this!" Oh. Don't worry about me. Everything's going good for you. Going for Josh. I got it. You all got it figured out, but I don't know what I want. And it's not going to be here in this parking lot. So out he uh, goes. Brooks Jensen walks out of NXT. Yeah. I mean, we love Brooks. Brooks, if you're listening out there, we love you. Sending all the, the thoughts and good vibes. You know, life's a garden. Dig it. But the world is your oyster. It's a big world out there with lots of other wrestling parking lots. Yeah. And other wrestling companies. I hope this might be what it we've been like. We've been joking for. about we've this. We've been pushing for and like this might happen. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been joking since the Dempsey thing with all Japan that, like, hey, maybe there's more crossover. I mean, something we didn't bring up is GCW with this somewhat blood sport crossover with with WWE. That's true. Triple H allowing Shayna Baszler to fight for Josh yeah. Barnett. It was apparently it's Barnett who asked for this. So maybe there'll be other ones. Maybe Brooks Jensen realizes NXT is not working out, but that clusterfuck could be looking real good. That, that DDT show on Thursday could be looking good. I think, I think it's, uh, we we've mentioned this a few times, some sort of excursion for some of these people who are super young, the people that have been on the Indies and the circuit, like, okay, yeah, like be here. But I think, I think it's good. He's so young. He's yeah. what 22 really yeah wow, it's, it, he's like really young so like i think uh as some sort of excursion would be good if they do that even if it's what one match against someone it, it's a cool idea and i think they seem to be more open to that now uh than they were um yeah he was born august 21st 2001 yeah, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, he yeah. also um, tweeted out, didn't he? He did. He's saying I'm um, going off social media for a while. Got to got to think about some things. So I, I want to see him show up in somewhere else in wrestling because like that's definitely where they're going with him walking out like that. And yeah. Just we've been joking about that for a while. Like, well, they have done stuff with Fallon. They have done stuff with Briggs. And then they made the storyline that he's like, hey, what, what am I doing? I don't mm. have anything. And yeah, I imagine him. I'd, I'd check out these. I checked out the Dempsey one. I definitely check out Absolutely. What, what he does because. We got his back, but something that was just a little thing in continuity of a movie, a TV show, or even wrestling. Fallon here, who's supposed to be his friend, who's like, hey, you know, don't do it. Don't do this. And he's like, nah, I got to leave and like walks off. And she's like, oh, there goes my friend. And then Kalani walks in. She's like, yo, what's up, bitch? How's it going? Yeah. And it's like, oh, we're going to go beat up these other girls. Let's go hang out. I'll show you how to do it. It's like, wait a second. I mean, <laughs> your yeah, friend just it, it's just one of those, it's it's like, why did Brooke show up to work to leave work when he was pissed off from a week ago. It's right. same like Kalani. Oh, shows unless up. it was last week, but I don't think it was last no, week. No, it so. was this week. Yeah. Like here, Kalani shows up and she's tying her hair up, ready for a fight. Right. It's like, again, it was a week. It wasn't like you got pissed off last week and it's like, all right, yeah, I'm going to tie my hair up and fight. Yeah. You just arrived. <laughs> like, Either way. Um, there was something as well I saw uh, where Brooks Jensen wore an Ole Anderson shirt. Did you see this? Oh yeah. And uh got a lot of backlash on like Twitter X because yeah. uh he uh, like Ole Anderson said some like pretty racist things in the past. Yeah, yeah. And I thought Brooks Jensen's like response about it was really mature again like for his age. He was basically saying, "Look, I know how I look. I know where I'm from and I know like a lot of people have a opinion about that right and i just want to let you know like no i may have a mullet i just like the dance and party <laughs> and uh i respected ole's work as a wrestler and i didn't know these things and i do absolutely not support racism of any kind right that kind of thing which yeah. like yeah he's wearing a t-shirt of a guy that just passed away who was a wrestler like it's right he's 20 as you said he's 22, and he's 22 years 22, old but i just thought his things. response like came across really mature like i'm really like rooting for this guy in general i think i mean it, just to bring it up i don't remember the show what we did recently oh it was was next you were digging up old tweets of mine mm -hmm. and in this tweet i was referencing like i'm pretty sure like an ex-girlfriend of mine who had a great moolah shirt mm. and i was like hey it's great that you got a wrestling shirt and all this stuff like where'd you get this she's like oh i love this old wrestler i don't know much about her but it's great old wrestler i'm like yeah well like you could have picked a different old wrestler yeah. and she's like why what do you mean i'm like well let me uh let me show you something here it's called dark side of the ring no uh but yeah like i i, I saw that response from him and i thought that was a, a pretty good one yeah so I, I know he means he means no harm and yeah. i mean like look uh wrestling aside it's obviously been a thing that blurs the lines but if you're a fan of this guy's wrestling and maybe not so much his views on the world in the real life person mm -hmm. like seems to be a reoccurring trend with a lot of wrestlers yeah, yeah. like you know i i could wear, be wearing a wrestler's shirt that's alive today and probably not agree with some of their for sure yeah politics or views or you know i said so bless brooks jensen All bless right. him yeah hopefully he shows up somewhere soon the Good Brothers come out. Uh, sorry, yeah, the the Kalani Jordan thing. It's it wasn't wasn't Blair. It was um, it was Kiana James and Izzy Dane that yes. she needs help with uh, to take yes. them out. And Fallon's like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll go fight them right now. See you later, Brooks. Mm. As she just like leaves her friend. The Good Brothers are here. First, I thought this was the UFC song "Face the Pain." And okay. I realized this is this was their like old stock music theme. I don't know what this theme was, but it was weird. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. The Good really. Brothers here on NXT taking on Hank and Tank, who are wearing well, Hank's wearing jorts, cut off shorts, jean yeah, shorts. Yeah, they're, they're wearing the me mechanics, mechanics gear. The yeah. mechanics 2.0 here, Hank and Tank. Uh, there's a big splashes. They they try to hit the like big E train, double team, ho train. Uh, standing splashes for some near falls on Carl. Uh, eventually, Hank is in there. He hits a nice-looking suplex on Carl for a near fall. And then uh, he goes up to the top rope but gets bumped off by by uh, Doc Gallows, who sends him, like, bumping off the apron, which looked like it hurt. And then Gallows and Anderson just tag in and out and start to beat down on Hank when eventually he makes the hot tag to Tank, 
who comes in. He hits an atomic drop. I haven't seen one of those in wrestling. Mm -hmm. used to hate this move back in the day. But now it's like, well, no one does it. So bring it back. Bring it back tank and he hits one or two of those and then they hit a pretty sweet looking assist like toss into a back suplex combo move for a near fall doc gallows had to make a dive for the save which was even more impressive than the tag team move yeah. <laughs> that dive uh for a near fall there but then carl tags back in hits a spine buster they send i think tank out of there and they hit the magic killer for the one two three and vic says they're done top talking shop so the good brothers advance in the tag tournament yeah i i think i think hank and tank are quite fun uh there's something quite like ugly and reckless about them in the ring though especially their gear <laughs> especially hank well, i think it's just everything i think i think especially hank just looks like this big bloke who's just trying to wrestle yeah um and I think some of the moves, kind of in a way, you know, the the Creed brothers sometimes are a little like they're impressive, but it's rough around the edges. And I definitely get that feeling with this team. There was a moment early where they tried this like tandem springboard double splash to the outside, which was cool for two big guys, but yeah. again, just looked looked a bit rough. And I don't know. Um, the back suplex combo looked good. Some of the other stuff looked good, but yeah. But but it, it's. I'm saying this as a like as a negative and a positive. It's kind of exciting to watch at the same time um, until someone maybe gets hurt and no one has. So maybe they're just making this look good. But yeah, they're they're rough around the edges, and I kind of kind of like that. Good brothers. It's like sure they're they're fine. Luckiest guys. They're in fine. Wrestling. I'm just I've seen them for so so long, <laughs> and I'd honestly rather see a different team in this like if it is just one team winning i do see it unfortunately being these guys because oh. they, they've set up the most with the wolf dogs already in their like backstage promos and stuff i guess whereas i'd much rather i'd much rather think like an lwo deserve a platform yeah. or, or axiom and fraser um i do too so i think it would be a better match if you had like these guys with all the high flyers mm. right like yeah that'd be pretty good uh yeah i'm not it's like the good brothers like i like them i i think it's funny that they've managed to still be making shit tons of money in wrestling have wrestled everywhere and now it's just nxt's time We've, it's every time match to pay the toll. identical with them as yeah. well i think except that dive <laughs> gallows can move like i know he's a big guy but i i think people in their head think he's just this slow lumbering guy he's pretty agile yeah and he's he keeps himself in good shape. Yeah, for a big dude, like he has gotten in better shape than not he used many to. people that size are pulling off tights and a singlet. You know? I was like, gonna say, as much as people want to shit on on him specifically, him because I know Carl's all about the bod, but like Carl's definitely helped him out for sure. Yeah, he looks he's wearing a singlet, so like yeah. he's not like just in a t shirt or anything, and he's mm. huge. So, but man, it's a good brothers. Yeah. <laughs> what is their thing? Take a hoot. Boots, I forget. I don't care. Never make us watch Top and Shop. <laughs> I watched that. You watch it twice. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day they'll do another one, and I'll watch it. Uh, maybe. So, what do we got here? We hear uh, after that match that next week is the return of the NXT Prime Target. Yeah, looking forward to this. It's been a while. Yeah, remember these? We used to get these for big matches for the takeover. So, like. Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, there's, there's been a bunch of them, but then they kind of tone them down into like smaller parts of the show, which is what I imagine we get next week. But looking at Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes for Stand and Deliver. I like they they at times did like a a long version that they put on YouTube. the network and YouTube. Yeah. I'd like to see that. And I like when they dive more into their like past pre-NXT and that kind of thing. Yeah. We've seen them go to their hometowns and stuff like that. Uh, I hope we get a proper proper prime target because these things have been excellent in the past. My favorite prime target was uh, Dickie Birds for uh, yeah. Up Next Mania. Yeah. <laughs> so Kelly Kincaid is now interviewing Trick Williams, who's getting ready for his match in a few minutes. And she says, hey, I saw what happened last week with Noam Dar with Lash Legend. He's like, oh, you saw that, huh? And he says, well, tonight, Noam Dar, boy, he ain't going far. And he says, I'm going to beat him and I'm going to look good while doing it. And I know Carmelo is in the building. So I know you're here. 
and I'm glad you're here. So show your faith tonight, and I'm a whoop that that ass because that's what it is, and that's what it's gonna be. Mm. And he smiles using Melo's own catchphrase at him as he walks off. So, damn, trick is uh, ready for Cooking. for Melo tonight. We see Roxanne Perez, and uh, she's like, she's sorry, she's leaving too. She saw Brooks Jensen just leave, so Roxanne's like, I'm fucking leaving too. She walks out, and uh, I swear the camera person, it's not Dan Matha, whoever, like, Roxanne, Roxanne. I thought they were singing a police song here <laughs> for a second, and she's like, yeah, leave me alone. And she's like, what's going on? And she goes, Lyra should just hand me the title, or I'll rip it out of her hands. Now get out of my face. And she walks off here. So evil Roxanne. That song's played way too much at work. Is it in one of your playlists? It's in every playlist. Every I playlist? don't know why. Any any playlist you put on, it, Roxanne comes on. And it's kind of, kind of a weird song when you think about it. I mean, yeah. Put on the red light. Yeah. Sting's not offering to help at all. He's like, just he's retired. He's like, just don't do oh, that. Oh, wait, that's Sting. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're not offering help though. <laughs> Come on. Same. I like uh, Phil Collins, the one where he's like, she walks by with uh, and no one helps her. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you could. <laughs> you <did. laughs> You're just singing about it. Yeah. It's a good song, but like, <laughs> you probably made a lot of money from the song that maybe you now you could help that go on the street. Her. And yeah. Roxanne, <laughs> get out of there. Damn. Uh, we see Kiana. J well, then, sorry, we did go over, but Roxanne Lyra is official for yeah. Stand and Deliver. So don't worry. Don't you dare worry. Kiana James and jasmine nix and izzy dame and oh man there's a lot of people here jc jane thank god we have the nxt chase you calendar to help me memorize people's names uh they are making fun of thea hale and jc calls her that annoying little toddler thea hale mm. oh that's just so man and they go oh we thought you were friends and they're like mocking her and everything like oh, what a loser that thea hale is and they say that uh you know they, they like each other's attitudes, like the four girls. They're like, oh, maybe we get along. We're all meanies. When out of nowhere, a flying Kalani Jordan and Fallon Henley attack, and it's this whole brawl. I think Jane and Nix had already walked off at this point, so it's just the four of them here. So I imagine this sets up some sort of tag match for next I week. I would assume so, yeah. yeah. Uh, next week also, Dijak versus Spears, Josh Briggs versus Duke Hudson, Ilya versus Stax. And uh, those tag that tag team match too, Otis and uh, Tazawa versus Wolf Dogs. So stack show, stacks, yeah, on the stack show. show on Ilya, yeah, right there. Main event time: Trick Williams taking on the Supernova Eleven. Eleven Noam Dar. Out comes the metaphor. Love their their entrance here, and out comes Trick Williams with Booker T on commentary. Oh yeah, man, as he's hyping him up here. And Booker T calls Trick Williams Thunderlips, which I believe also is a Rocky reference. Okay. Uh, is it Hulk Hogan's character? Not the best Rocky reference, Booker, but I, or maybe he's calling him something from another reference. But I, I am aware from Rocky. Uh, Noam Dar and Trick go at it here. And Dar yeah, puts it's, him. It's Hogan. Yeah. Trick uh, is putting, putting Trick. Sorry, Noam's putting Trick in a bunch of different submissions. <laughs> and that's the story throughout the match. He has this crazy looking guillotine early on here. And Trick is like starts to fight out of it as then the camera cuts to like a picture in picture and it's Carmelo Hayes's locker room door with his name on it with all the security guards with the face masks on and the bulletproof vests. And one of them knocks on the door. Mello, it's time, which I was exactly hoping they said that. Are we getting a like a Goldberg-esque entrance for Mello? That's uh, standing I mean, yeah, with all these guards. That's well, it was I leading saw. up for, for a, a plan. No, I know, but just the whole knock on the door yeah. and the entourage and all that. Love it. So the match continues here. Meanwhile, uh, they sorry, it's an uppercut from Trick for a near fall. When we come back again, Dar is in control with all these submissions and he's transitioning from like ankle locks to arm bars. It's very impressive. Uh, eventually, Trick counters an arm triangle into a huge sit up powerbomb, which looked really nice actually, but Dar kicks out of that. Uh, and then Dar realizes he's got like blood on him. And I think it came from tricks like side of his temple or like forehead. Temple, yeah. And Dar like rubs the blood and like licks it a little bit as well here. Uh, as he then hits a Superman punch to trick for a near fall. Uh, Dar then counters like tricks, like lift up move the like, almost like the Devlin he, he, side. Yeah. He thing. does the, the, the grapple wrist control. Like yeah. Leap. But he counters this into a DDT, which looked really nice here from Dar. And then into the ankle lock, into a knee bar with the vine here. 
but eventually Trick gets to the ropes and then hits a huge bookend or more of a rock bottom as Vic Joseph says he's hit rock bottom and Book says, yeah, I know that move. There, so, there was like 10 seconds of silence yeah. after because Vic always seems to deliberately call it the rock yeah. bottom and Book's just like, man, it's the bookend. Although it looked more like a rock bottom than a bookend, yeah. if we're being honest. Yeah. Too, yeah. But uh, he couldn't capitalize because he was uh, selling his injuries here. Uh, eventually, Trick starts to hype up. He hits the one arm flapjack, and Vic says, We're not talking Waffle House. There's then the side kicks to the head when Lash Legend goes up on the apron and she points at Trick and she's like, Hey, you come over here. He goes, Oh, me. And he goes over and she goes to slap Trick, but just like last week, he catches the slap. And you think maybe he's going to deliver another smooch mm. just like last week. When instead, it's a distraction for Dar to hit him with a German suplex for a one-two, but Trick gets out. And then eventually, Trick hits him with another kick and then runs at him with the Trick shot, the flying knee to the head. It, was that the first time they've called it that? They we've called seen it something him, else, right? We've seen him use this move a lot. Yeah, but like, they called I, it the Flash Knee yeah. before, which I was like, well, I mean, we could call it something The Trick else. Shot's cool. Trick I like Shot, that. yeah, absolutely. One, two, three. Shout out John Virgo. You don't, won't know that reference, but someone will get it. Is, I'm like, is trick shots in soccer as well? We, we had basketball. a a uh, snooker Saturday night game show. Wow! Oh, called so that kind of big trick break, show. right? And uh, one of the presenters, John Virgo, who was an ex snooker player, right? Every week would be like the crazy trick shot he does, right? And you'd have to try and as like the contestant try and do the trick shot he's done. Okay. I, they're they're like, pretty cool. I'll show you some trick shot. I'm thinking like Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, basketball, kinda. that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome name for a move. The move looks great too. And Trick wins here. He's standing tall. The metaphor leave the ring. And Trick grabs a microphone and he's like, "Come on, I know you're out there. Let's go. Come on, Mello, get out of here." So out comes the security guards. They all come out wearing the the vests, the masks, and they all come around to the ring. They surround the ring on the apron and then Mello's music hits and as trick is in the ring waiting for Mello, out comes carmelo hayes in his gear you know, taller than- <laughs> with his jacket on that he was wearing earlier covering his head mm. which trick is like all right come on come on but in the shot that we see the one security guard that had suspicious looking tattoos that looked a little similar to carmelo hayes slowly takes off one of the masks Gets in the ring like a snake here and then attacks Trick from behind. Hits him with his own Trick shot and then stands over top of him. The, with the bulletproof vest on and the mask off just standing tall. And that's what he's going to do at Stand and Deliver as NXT goes off the air. I liked it. I think you need the heel to get more in on the baby face before they come back. Uh, I was just, as soon as they came out, I was like, that's him. They're Mellow's tattoos. <laughs> and what was frustrating is they're all wearing long sleeve white shirts with the sleeves rolled up. It's like, lads, just right. keep them all down. Yeah. And so but the, I think it could have been a good surprise is what I'm saying, like for me. But I, I like the idea of But the then they, they did go the extra mile with not just hitting his music. So then because of how many times in rest. True. How many times does it just the music that yeah. you're like, oh, I'm not going to look at anything else just because I hear your music. Where they actually had like a body double, yeah. Which like no one does that. So yeah. even though we could tell like that's not him, like as a crowd, you you would just assume. And they've him. had the masks for weeks now at this point yeah. to lead to this. Moment. We were we assumed off the get go that it was trick under one of the masks, yeah. right? And now they've completely flipped it. So yeah, really love this angle. I mean, the match itself, trick and Noam was awesome Pretty good. as well. Yeah, Noam's I I metaphor of fun. Uh, it's now they're out of the Heritage Cup thing. Um, I'd like to see what they do with Noam Dar because he's very talented in ring and he's a, a good talker as well. Um, and I like, I like his thing. Like, okay. I liked his justification for going for trick. It's okay. You're getting a lot of buzz at the moment. Well, if I can beat you, I can raise my stock. I thought they had a good match and we say it all the time. Mellow, uh, sorry, trick just keeps getting better and better. And it's yeah. like, he's got great size on him. He's not like a, like a big muscle guy, but he's so tall. So those leg lariats look good when he hits like a flapjack looks good. The flapjack when he's hitting like a, a rock bottom or something, he's he's sending them really far. He's got like that kind of uh, Okada height in a way. Yeah, you don't yeah. think of Okada as like 
the big show or the undertaker but he's big he's tall um and agile so yeah i i thought i i liked the match and i did like the angle definitely uh this this and the women's match are the two i'm most looking forward to for stan and yes Taylor. yes i mean sorry Ilya and tony d but i think the main event of this show should be trick williams and carmelo hayes like do we right now they haven't made any stipulations yeah any that's matches. true like we, it hasn't been no so, DQ or anything yet yeah like one criticism could have been that mellow then like really beats him up again and then like it causes them to have the unsanctioned you got to finish the triple h Shawn michaels on i mean match. you do on yeah you do unsanctioned because mellow isn't sorry trick isn't medically cleared don't you yeah that's yeah, what yeah, it is yeah, so yeah. trick is like nah it's like we're we can't we can't yeah sanction this match yeah and then you so like the prime target next week is going to show all the way back from like the security ca- tapes and stuff to, from the attack that started the yeah. whole thing that we followed for a while so like it could be good but yeah i think that's the only one i, I really like this angle and mellow and trick will definitely i mean how awesome was it that trick is not only wrestling in a match where i believe is you know his, his real life girlfriend is in this segment yeah on the outside and then his like best friend mellow is also in this like I feel like they're all having a lot of fun and and doing a a good job while doing it. So, yeah, uh, I think this week's episode of NXT stepped up a a lot. I didn't really like last week's at all. I thought it was just kind of there. But this week, at least, it kind of cements a few things. It cements, yeah, the Trick and Mellow storyline is good. Don't forget about it. It's it's still a hot character, a hot act, and the match will definitely deserve it. And like I said, I think it deserves to have the main event spot, even though it's not for the title. But then everything else tonight was was pretty good. There was some good wrestling. Yeah. The the tag team match was probably my favorite thing, but the main event was pretty solid too. Yeah, you, you set up some good matches. I think you're you're building up your your next class quite nicely when when you do have all these people graduate. Like I think there is promising talent there. Um and yeah, I, I think the the stand and deliver matches are starting to come into shape. Yeah, yeah, uh absolutely. So so far at Stand and Deliver, Dragon off Tony D. Wolf Dogs versus To Be Determined, Trick versus Mellow, Lyra versus Roxanne. I also imagine we get some sort of uh, meat madness or big lads wrestling, as we were saying, for the NA title and possibly Thea Hale, JC Jane. Yeah, I, I think they'll put something. Oh, I, please don't do a kickoff show. There's probably, we're not, go, it's going to be 11 o'clock. It's 11 a.m., isn't it? They, they did announce like the, like the panel stuff. Uh, they they right. said it's starting at okay. eleven, but whether they end up throwing something on the pre, which they have before, uh, we'll see. But I feel like, but you could do Thea Hale, JC Jane as a TV match as well. Sure, uh, you don't ne- necessarily have to put that on there. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so there we go. That's what we thought of NXT this week. Is there uh, any feedback? Out there? Uh, we've got one from Magan who says a decent episode that pushed things forward. NQCC versus Axiom Fraser was dope. The Heritage Cup match was very good, but the finish was weak by the overbooking by continuing Thea Hale's feud with JC Jane. Main event had little doubt with Trick Dub uh, prevailing and the post-match angle with that bait and switch. It's also nice to see Sol Ruka get back in the ring and she didn't look rusty being gone for almost a year. It was also very cool to see DNA and Arsenal in the front row. They're battle rappers. Oh, I thought you spelled. Oh. I thought you spelled my football team wrong. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Davy, why Arsenal. the hell did you? Now. I was about to be like, why am I correcting a Brit <laughs> on how to pronounce Arsenal? They're battle rappers. DNA has a wrestling podcast too. Nice, hell yeah! Thank you, Megan. I was wondering. Well, they did say that. Yeah. As a battle rapper champion myself, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I know a thing or two about battle raps. You know, Arsenal, <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> Uh, he'll make an arsenal out of you. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Never forget. What was that? What event was that at? You need a prime target. Uh, that was the, up next The summer. Inferno match? Was that the... Th- no, it was the battle rap, rap battle. Rap. <laughs> battle rap. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Megan. And when I'm done with you, DNA, there'll be no DNA <laughs> trace. Anyway, that's not a rap, but I'm just talking <laughs> trash. I'm tired. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, listening here today. Of course, we'll be back next Tuesday night here on the post wrestling feed at, right after NXT ends at 10 15 PM Eastern time. But we have all these other podcasts search poison Rana one word in your podcast app or on YouTube and hit that subscribe and check out all the other shows. Davey and I do including poison Rana live every Sunday. We had about AEW dynamite collision, SmackDown raw, everything going on in the world of wrestling and Kate Middleton. 
Yeah. Which apparently we broke this story to a lot of people this week. I don't know how many messages we've both gotten individually about like, guys, I had no idea. The best one. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Here we are because I don't have it open. But guys, I had to stop the podcast and like <laughs> spent like 20 minutes going down a thing to only listen back. I was like dying laughing at that. So, uh, so, so what's the update with Kate? Well, apparently her and William was seen on a walk earlier. I'll tell you something. That didn't look like her. That ain't her. She's nah. doing the old Carmelo Hayes with the with the body switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. That wasn't her. That didn't look like her. No, it looked like a completely different person. Okay. And I'm like, hey, it like if you're gonna try, at least like get someone to look like you. But so that's it. People just assume this is her now. It's fake, Kate. New Kate. Where's Kate? Where's the real <laughs> Kate? I'm still interested. All you need to search is Kate Middleton. Thomas, what's this guy's name? Thomas Smith Mitchell. Was it Thomas Hitch Hitch Hitchcliffe? It's a rest. I think that's a different guy. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I don't know. There's conspiracy going around, and uh, I love a good conspiracy. We're on the case. Yeah, we'll get it solved. But so far, I'm not. I'm not convinced. You're not convinced. No, that's, that, at, that, not that, at this moment. Okay. No, because I still am on to the the one thing. Oh, uh, I was. I'm just like everyone else. I use Photoshop. Bullshit! You use Photoshop. You're a princess. There's no way you're in your like. Oh, I'm gonna Photoshop. No, you were. You're, something's up. Something's up. Foot going on in the world, mm. whatever it is over there. But, but anyways, I All digress. Right. Yeah, you'll uh, hear more of that on Saturday, Sunday. Anyway, we'll 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 do a full segment on. Maybe I'll even. Kate. Yeah, maybe I'll even talk about how uh, we had to put WH. Uh, in a wheelbarrow home on uh, Saturday night. I think you should leave WH out of this. <laughs> I've said too much. Uh, yeah, we had a good St. Patrick's Day weekend. Uh, thank you, everyone out there. We appreciate you. At Poison Rana Pod, Twitter, Instagram. Go give us a follow and check out all the other stuff that we do. We said we had a Patreon as well. And Toronto Peaks, all these live events, poisonrana.ca. And join the Facebook group while you're at it. All right. Do it. I myself, Brain Harrington. Twitter, Instagram. I am at the Bray D. And I am at Davy Portman. Take care. Goodbye. Be safe. And mind your business. Ahoy! First time in a long time. The back like I never left Taking these things as it comes You know me, I don't read ahead Watch me burn down everything BBE on the TV set When I'm in control on the road You can never really know what's up next 